Using MCP is one of the most powerful ways to surface natural language processing and contextual insights in your industrial data flow. And with FlowFuse, building this is incredibly simple. Hey there, my name is Christopher Sandoval. I'm a developer relations advocate here at FlowFuse. And today I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process of setting up your own MCP flow on FlowFuse. Ready? Let's get started. What is MCP? So before we get into our walkthrough, let's briefly talk about what MCP is. So MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. It was released to the public by Anthropic as a way of connecting large language models to contextual data. By connecting LLMs to your own data, you can do everything from generating insights to creating custom applications, all natively within your AI provider of choice. And for industrial orgs, this means that you can connect your LLM and your MCP to your industrial data. You can ask it something like, which machine is negatively impacting our OEE the most? Which machines are nearing their end of life? You can use this data to guide your operations and really level up your overall intelligence. And since FlowFuse has native MCP support, getting this going is not difficult at all. It's actually incredibly simple. In fact, for most providers, you'll be able to build out your MCP flow in just a handful of minutes. With all of that said, let's dive into how to build this in FlowFuse itself. Building an MCP flow in FlowFuse. So in order to get started, you're going to want to install the FlowFuse MCP nodes. Inside the palette manager, go to the FlowFuse nodes catalog. In here, search MCP. Click this option and install. Once you've installed this palette, go ahead and exit out and then deploy. Now, in order to understand how MCP works on FlowFuse, you need to understand how MCP works in general. When a user needs access to a resource, they have to understand where that resource lives and how to interact with it. And because humans are using these resources, we can intuit, we can figure out how to actually connect to that resource and how to make it do what we want it to do. And if we don't understand how to make it do what we want it to do, we can go through documentation or we can experiment or we can build our own services. Where things get a lot more complicated is when you start injecting agents into the process. You see, an agent wants to act on our behalf and it's going to do everything that it can to get to that point but we don't want it to hallucinate information or invent new methodologies when a method already exists. We want it to use systems that have already been created and we want it to be able to reference those systems in a meaningful way. So instead what MCP does is basically create some pointers that link to those resources and tools. So with that in mind, we can start building out our MCP flow. As you can see here, we have a whole bunch of sensors that are pushing both to an MQTT out node as well as a local database. And what we're going to do is actually use a query on the database to form the resource that we're feeding to the MCP server itself. So to do that, let's start with the MCP resource node. Let's drag a query onto the workspace and connect it. And then to let the MCP resource server know that this is the terminal point of the flow, we'll drag this final piece onto the workspace and connect it to our query. Now that was just an example, but all of our resource flows are built exactly the same. We have an MCP resource node that is basically surfacing some sort of data to the end result for the MCP server. Then we have the query node, which is actually setting the query that's going to be used to surface that data. And then from here, we're terminating with the MCP response node to let the MCP server know that this is the terminal state. Now we need to actually make our MCP server connection. To do this, head into VS Code or some other software that has an agent that can support MCP servers. Navigate to the top bar and type in caret MCP. Inside of VS Code, this will allow you to list servers, add servers, open your user configuration, and browse all of your connected MCP servers. For right now, we're going to go down to add server. Select the HTTP option and drop in the link to your FlowFuse instance. Make sure that it ends with MCP. Now give it a name. It doesn't matter really what you call it, just make it something memorable. Now that we have this system set up, we can start looking at all the resources that are actually on offer for our agent. In order to make this query, we're going to keep going to the Add Context button and selecting each individual resource that we want it to use. Next, we're going to ask the system a very pointed question. Are there any panels connected to our system that are currently exceeding their specifications? 
the agent will then use all of the data that we've provided through the MCP server to actually answer this question. As you can see, the agent has looked at the specification files and has gone through each of the individual panels connected to see whether or not the data that they're generating are within specifications. The agent has also been able to effectively figure out that some of the readings that we provided are actually not temperature data, but are production data. And this is just one example of the way something like this can work. If you want to see additional examples of what this looks like in practice, I suggest you look at our original MCP and ONNX videos. But for the purposes of this demonstration, you just saw how we created an MCP system on FlowFuse in less than two minutes. This system might look simple, but it's actually incredibly powerful. You can get a crazy amount of insights that don't require you going into documentation or trying to figure out what the sensors on your system are actually trying to tell you. This is just one example of how a system like this can be created in just a matter of minutes. The great thing about MCP on FlowFuse is that it's incredibly extensible and scaled. You can use this technology to build a ton of different flows and systems with ease. And over the coming months, we're going to be rolling out even better MCP support meaning that the already fantastic MCP experience on FlowFuse is just going to keep getting better. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like, comment, or subscribe. If you want to get started with MCP on FlowFuse, you can head over to flowfuse.com to start your free 14-day trial. This has been Christopher Sandoval. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.